Hello and welcome to Simon Tech Notes. My name is Christian and I'm part of the technical support team here. In this video, we will be going over Modbus Master, TCP, and RTU in relation to the Simon PLC. For starters, I'm going to open up Cycon Software, which is the universal application for Simon PLC families. For starters, we should probably go over the COM parameters for governing serial and TCP. So within the project tree, if you go to PLC parameter, you'll notice that there's a channel one, which is for RS-232. And then you can just declare the COM parameters here, ignoring station number. Channel two, ignoring station number. This is for RS-422, 485. Declare your COM parameters. And last but not least, the ethernet tab, which you will declare your IP address, subnet, and gateway. Also, you will need to declare special programs for both master TCP and RTU. So if you right click and then on the program part branch of the project tree, click no, new program, you'll notice that we have Modbus RTU master program and a Modbus TCP master program. Both of those are located right here for your convenience, I've already had this set up. For each of them, you will have to declare the slot on what card in the PLC setup is actually confirming the master program. So in mine, the CPU will be confirming the master program. So slot zero is the appropriate choice for the CPU. You wouldn't want to pick the right slot in case you're, you're using a serial card or an ethernet card somewhere else within the PLC configuration. So if it's slot four, you're going to go ahead, drop, do the drop down and pick slot four. But for convenience sake, I'm going to go ahead and pick slot zero. There is a caveat here. The PLCS cannot do Modbus TCP master by default. You will need to get an ethernet card. So the PLCS ethernet master module uh, program will never be slot zero because it could not perform TCP master by itself. So it, this will definitely always have to be slot one through 11 because it will have to be an ethernet card. Going forward, if you just want to start talking to Modbus addresses without any control, you're going to go ahead and press add. And then once you press add, you'll have a configuration set up like this, my destination station. So this means that I'm talking through serial. So I'm talking through channel one. So RS-232, I'm looking at destination station zero. I'm talking to my zero, my zero Modbus registers starting at one. I'm looking at one word size data count and I'm going to store that to device M00. So this is a bit and I'm going to be starting it in M00. By default, it does not train or it transmits automatically. If you want to control the rate at which it transfers, you would want to check this box and I'll go through later in this demonstration on what you would do if you do check this box. Likewise with ethernet, you're going to do the same procedure. You're going to, but the only difference is you declare the IP address of the station you're going to be talking to. So you would click new, type in the IP address, and then you would have a station like this. And then just as a reminder, you will have to pick a different slot for this because the ethernet card will never be slot zero. So just like the serial, you will have a station number you're going to be targeting. You're going to be either reading one of these variable types. So I just chose by default recoil status. So those are my zero Modbus addresses. I'm starting at address one. So zero, 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 one data size of one. So one bit, and that's going to store to device L20, L20, the bit. And then by default, it transmits automatically. So if you don't want it to transmit automatically by default, go ahead and check this box. Now, if you check that box and you want to control the rate, at which it transfers data, I recommend you opening up the help file, going to PLC instruction, and then pulling up these two help files for reminders. One is called send, and one is called receive. Send sends information from the master station to the slave station. Receive gathers information from the slave station and brings it to the master station. So let me go through the, the configuration of those instructions right here. So if I were to turn on this button, I'm going to send data from this instruction to the state or the slave station. And likewise, if I activate, uh, and I'll also be bringing in data from that slave station to the master station here. 
So just to go over the format of these instructions, PID refers to the program identifier. So the program identifier can be found within these little brackets over here. So zero refers to zero, zero, zero. Likewise, if you see the one down here, these ones refer to this program right here. Now you'll be looking at this odd character in the middle. You see I have H0000. So this is actually addressing which channel I'm talking through and which frame number I'm talking to. So zero, zero, for talking to the serial program means I'm talking through channel one, which is what I'm gonna be doing. And then zero, zero here refers to the frame number. So I'm talking through channel one, RS-232, and I'm talking through the frame number zero, zero, which is this one right here. And then I'm going to see the result of my communication, not the result of moving data, but the result of the communication, com result, in M100. Remember, the device where the data is being stored is actually M00, and the Modbus address 0001. Likewise, I can also do this with receive. The receive will have the same structure, just pick a different COM result so you don't have overlapping data registers. And then when I get into TCP, it's literally the same method. You just need to make sure that when you are looking at this odd variable in the middle, middle this H variable, you are looking at, instead of just zero, zero for channel one and zero, one for channel two, this, these first two zeros refer to which data server you're talking to. So if you have multiple ones, so this would be zero, zero, this would be zero, one, and then you'd have a zero, two, a zero, three, you can have all the way up to zero, like 50. You can have a bunch of them. And then, just as a reminder, you can find these send and receive notations within your help file if you ever need further guidance. That is it for this video. Thank you for tuning in.